Hello. Woo. That was loud. Hi, everyone. Um, if anybody was here for the data piece, uh, I'm going to walk through what we do for the front end, uh, primarily Power BI, but utilizing the cubes that Jim spoke about just a few minutes ago. Um, and we have a kind of a unique way we design and a unique way to deliver content. So we wanted to bring that up and talk about it a little bit. OK, so uh, Jim discussed purpose-built cubes. And this is going to be one example of one uh, and how we utilized it. So we had a, pri a big problem uh, internally where we had controllers and business users that uh, would both go to meetings and pull numbers independently, and they'd apply either different logic or they'd refresh at the different times. So then when they get to that meeting with, say, a CVP, they'd end up arguing over whose numbers are accurate, and they'd say, I don't recognize that number. Well, I don't recognize that number. And then they'd end up wasting a ton of time on this. So uh, we, we decided about two years ago, we need to fix this problem. So we did uh, a pilot program, very basic back end. This was before I met Alum and Jim over there and got really fancy on the back end. Um, and we're able to tie together multiple sources and get consistent on logic so we could solve that problem. In addition to the time wasting, we just had a, a general lack of agility. So if we had a simple question, how much money do I have left, or a controller gets a PO request, they don't know if they can approve it unless they go tie all these systems back together and go refresh all their data sources uh, and spend a ton of time just trying to get back to that simple question. So while I flipped the slide, we've dubbed this thing the bank statement because we, we like we said, we, we're in the marketing, um, we support marketing. And basically, if you're a consumer today, you go and you pull your bank statement, you don't stop at the bank to ask what my balance is. And so really, this is what, what Chris is gonna show. That's what we've achieved here for our marketing organization. So uh, backing up a little bit uh, about how we go about Power BI design, this doesn't just apply to this situation, but this is a great example of it. Uh, first off, we want no training required. So one of the primary purposes as finance people was to alleviate some of the work from our controllers. So prior to this, uh, business partner has a question, they would reach out to the controller, controller would have to do all this work and come back with an answer. Um, in addition, even through Power BI, it's pretty self-explanatory in most cases, but as business users, they don't get in there enough to really know how to navigate it, especially when it comes to things like drill through or even just drilling down and getting back to where you started. It's not necessarily intuitive, so we wanted to design around that a little bit. Um, and then we want the user to be able to be going through the report and say, OK, I have a question. How can I figure out the answer and get to that answer within the same report and without it leaving? Um, another principle is quick access to detailed depth. So we uh, are serving up many different levels of user here, both on the controller side and the business. We might have a CVP and a person who just started entry level role that has a budget they have to manage. So we wanted to be able to make the views apply across all of those levels. And then the last one is being internal Microsoft. Uh, we really want to stay up on what Power BI has to offer. They iterate very, very quickly. And staying ahead on that gives us uh, access to things that might have been impossible in the past. And if you don't pay attention to how quickly they're iterating and what new features come out, you, you could be missing out on something. So we do a lot of bookmarking, a lot of drill through. And I think we're going to switch over just straight to the demo now. So a couple things. As you'll see here, first off, this is our SharePoint content management. So this is all Power BI embedded. Um, I know the Power BI just talked today in this, in this morning session about uh, app management and how you can tab on the left side. They kind of stole that from us, if you ask me. But um, we are working with embedded in this case. And the idea is for our controllers, primarily, we want them to only live in one place. So this is Power BI right here. And if you click right here, this will take us to an Excel online. And all within the same window. And then same thing for presentations. So if I go right there, it pops us right to a PowerPoint. So a controller can come in here and manage their entire job through this one portal. You get back out of there. OK, now back to the Power BI, because that's the best part. And then from here, we can go full screen so we can get a better view. And I'll just simply walk through this report, um, give you an idea of how we kind of uh, use Power BI a little differently than most people do. Can I OK. So first off, 
for our idea of no training required, we have this guide button right here, and all of this is, all this is is fancy bookmarking. So everything in here is standard Power BI out of the box. So click that. So that just tells them click here, to hover here, drill here, that kind of stuff. Um, just using bookmarks and bringing in shapes, hiding and unhiding with the bookmarks. So then you click anywhere to continue and get out of there. Pop it back up, some people are taking pictures. <laughs> but yeah, cre I call it creative bookmarking. Uh, I'm going to coin that term. Okay. Uh, the next one, and the, the idea with that was avoid a controller getting a question of how do I get to my data, right? The uh, next one is source info. So if you want to give that one a quick click, this will give us high level definitions for the data as well as when the data was last refreshed. And so there's a ton of ways you can take this kind of concept, just popping in and out the information that kind of supports the report. If you had links, that kind of thing, it's easy to just uh, have bookmarks control that. Okay, so next is the idea of filtering and not showing all of our filters at one time. So we have row level security applied on the back end for this thing, and most users will have access to maybe one level of team. So there's no reason to really have that displayed. If you have it displayed, you're running a query just to pop it open. So in this case, we uh, have hidden all the filters and we've added the ability to clear them there. That's just through bookmarking as well. And if you'll click on team level two and go to 006 is good. Top one. Up oh, there. And then you can click anywhere to get out of it. So there, the, uh, you'll notice the speed. We aren't cached or anything, and that's based off of our cube logic. Yeah, I just wanted to highlight that cube has, um, I believe, 100 million records on the, on the fact table. Yep. Okay, so this one looks a little boring on the front, just because we're trying to show PO aging, and since we're in June, there's not much aging going on. But if you see these little pieces here, that's where we have old open POs that they need to go clean up. Um, but the idea is super high level summary view that a controller that oversees maybe that entire team 006 or a business partner that controls that entire team, they just come into this one spot and get a quick idea of what uh, or where they stand for their commitment. If you want to click the IO owner view, this one's really the bread and butter of this thing. So with the idea of being able to get to extreme depth within a couple clicks, uh, we filtered on team 006. They have one initiative owner. We've replaced the data with some dummy data. So it would normally have a person's name right here. And we have the ability to say, go to a meeting with that person who might be a GM or CVP. And as a controller, I can come in here and say, first off, you're 86% committed. So we need to do some spending. If I want to see depth and see what is causing that 86%, I can click on initiative right up here. And the idea of this is really just make it easier for the business users to drill because they don't know necessarily what they're doing on drilling and getting back to where they came from. Um, and also allowing the ability to drill multiple layers at the same time. So if we would have gone straight to internal order, if you want to click that, that'll drill us down to the deepest depth um, that we're going to show in this presentation. Uh, but you could skip all the way back to initiative owner as well if you'd like. So you can hop around without having to say right click, drill down, right click, drill down. And that's all, again, just bookmarkings for selected visuals. Now, if you will go to initiative for Milam, the real value of this thing is you're in the meeting, you see, for example, 516% committed on this line. So this is a specific program. Uh, we want to see what's going on with it. If you give it a right click and say drill through to transaction detail, we can get immediately down to every transaction that makes up that amount. In this case, it's only a couple, sometimes it's thousands. Uh, renders pretty quick regardless. And then we can also apply more filters if we want to over here. Um, and then the idea is you figure out what to look at, hit go back to get right back to where you came from. And then say we have the same, same thing. The majority of that number right there looks like open POs. We're late in the year to have open POs. You can right click on like that 412, 497 right there, Lum, and say drill through to open PO detail and get a breakout of all of those open POs that make up that number. So another thing we did uh, for this one is we wanted to tie together some systems that aren't necessarily for data, but they're more for business operations. So we have li two links in here that are based on our PO number. So this is internal system for purchase orders, internal system for invoicing. And uh, we noticed when we were building this thing out that both of those sites have identical URLs, but just the PO number is different. So we wrote measures within the cube to create those URLs. And then in Power BI, you can display them with just a link. So one click takes you all the way to it. You don't have to click it, though, because that's real. <laughs> and then go back. 
And then the, uh, the last view that I want to show on this one is our team summary. So this would be for a controller manager, for example. We're on team 006. If we want to go down one more level, go team level three there. It'll draw both the table and the graph at the same time. Because that's another one where Power BI doesn't quite do it. Um, drilling down to do both of them at the same time. If you do it the traditional way, you'd right click, drill down, then come over here and right click, drill down. And doing it through bookmarking, we're able to do both at the same time. Where are we on time? Good? 10 minutes. Oh, man, I go fast. So how many of you guys like the speed of how this thing works? Yeah, you guys would all take this. How many of you guys like the experience of really navigating like an app versus Power BI? Yeah, so here's a couple of things if you start to take this approach. I think within the first month that we launched this, we had 500 marketers, and believe me, they were not finance people. They did not care about any of this data. This was a duty. And we've, uh, I think over time, we have about 1,000 people that go hit this report pretty regularly. Do you know how many support tickets we get on this thing? Zero. So, so it's, it's, it's really awesome just from an operation standpoint. Just every way you look at it, we get, we get no... No need to support. Yeah, and based on the cube structure, there's no rollover. I haven't touched it for maintenance in a year almost. Uh, the only thing we've done is add a little a couple of things for controllers here and there when they ask, uh, but never had any uh, like data integrity issues or anything like that with it. And I think like, that's a credit to the cube structure, really, when it comes down to it. Um, when you have good back end, it's really easy to have fun with the front end and make some really cool stuff. Uh, without like really impacting performance. You had a question. Yeah, you a question. Can you maybe demonstrate how you did the drill down uh, via the bookmarks? Like uh, in Power BI Desktop. <laughs> oh, let's try it. We got ten minutes. Let's see what we can do. Uh, you don't have desktop. Yeah, I'll just wing it. This is. This might oh. take a minute to set up, um, uh, but I can answer questions because there's a lot of, we, we've spent five years really um, iterating on, on getting to this point and just about every single thing that we do is deliberate. Actually here. And so if you guys have other questions while he pulls it up, I'll, I'll, I'll try to answer. Um, just a question, is it the all Power BI or is it a combination of Power Apps and Power BI? No, so in this, so the question was, is this Power BI or a combination of Power Apps, Power BI? It actually is all Power BI only. Uh, there's a lot of trickery with bookmarking to really make it work like an app. Um, but a big benefit of that is as well, we leverage SharePoint. And one of the things that we do internally is we sell these solutions to customers. And so we're like, has to be Microsoft built only as we build them internally. And so it's truly that if you, any of you work in, in finance or operations or there, um, having a one stop shop where you send people to basically get all their content and then it's role-based organized. So for example, if you're a controller, maybe you have a few uh, Excel reports, Power BI reports, they don't want to go find them in 100 places. So it truly provides uh, that end-to-end -end experience in one place. I think I'm almost there. But keep asking questions. I, so I, this is a question around your model. How do you handle commentary uh, on your finance data? Uh, do you do Power BI reporting on that as well, or is that offline? Yeah, so the question was on, on commentary, and yes, we still do too many Power, PowerPoint reports with, uh, with Power BI even at Microsoft, but uh, we, we've tried different things, and we have uh, the, the latest iteration that we're working on that is actually leveraging Power Apps to save data back uh, to do commentary on it, but it's still somewhat limited. I'd be lying to you if I said we have figured it out, because we have not. Okay, I think I got it. So no, Chris is going to show the demo quickly out. here. Okay, you want to hold that for me? Flip the sure. demo. Yeah. I'm doing. I have to do this in services because he doesn't have desktop properly. So, <laughs> <laughs> data guy. Okay, so I've got two visuals here, um, and hopefully service bookmarks work the way the desktop does. But what I do with this thing is say I like the state they're in now. Like say they're the team level one. I'll just have them both selected and go to my bookmarks. Do, 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 do. Where are bookmarks in this thing? Bookmark, bookmark, bookmark. And I'll add a new bookmark. And you'll see there's a ton of bookmarks in here. 
because everything we do has a ton, like a lot of bookmarks associated, but luckily they're pretty easy to maintain. And I'm going to do selected visuals on this one. And the key is keeping data. You went in front of the mic. <laughs> uh, keeping data selected on this one. So what that did is it just captured the state that they're in now. So now I can come in here and drill down. So we'll drill down there, and we'll drill down on that one. So it's going to look ugly, but it'll, it'll prove the point. Select them both again. If I can click. And then add a new one. And then I'll have to come in here and say selected visuals again. And we're good to go. So now if I go to 28, it's there, and 29 drills them both down. And then you just bring in buttons and assign them to those two bookmarks. Cool. And we do a lot of that trickery. One of the concepts I like to follow, I don't have an example for it for this, but is if you don't need to show two things together at the same time, don't bother showing them because you're running extra queries. Uh, and the idea of flipping visuals in and out using bookmarks is very powerful. So say example, we have a current period and like last period, not necessarily need to see them all at the same time. Um, we can just have two buttons, current and last, and then we can bring the queries in and out when we need to. And the performance analyzer they launched, I think it was last month, made that really visible, uh, just how limiting what you have on a page uh, can really speed up performance. Any other questions? Comments? There we go. How did you do that pop in and out uh, filter? Was that using bookmarks also, or is that? So that one, uh, same situation. I can show you that real quick. We do a lot with shapes. So I can say a rectangle here. And that's exactly what we do on that filter piece. So there's my rectangle. And then we can come in and do like maybe a slicer on top of it. Hopefully I'll be able to put it on top when I'm in services. I usually just use desktop instead of services. And go team right there. So there's my slicer and my page there, or my uh, rectangle. So I'll just keep those two collect, uh, selected, add them, and then do selected visuals. And in this case, I'd turn data off, because if you have data turned on, it'll actually clear your filter back to whatever state it was on. So it's important to have it cleared off. Um, so that would be my open filters button right there. So now I'm going to do the exact opposite of that thing. I need to bring out my, let's see, view selection pane here. And then I'll just take my slicer and my shape and hide them. And then select them in my selection pane. Thanks, Jim. Thanks, Jim. And now they're hidden. So I'm going to bookmark the state of those two visuals with them hidden. And then turn off data again so it doesn't erase what I already did. So now if I were to go to 30, pops them open, 31, closes them down. And that's important because slicers run queries every time you have slicers visible on a page. Does the round trip DAX call not happen if the if the visual is hidden? Okay. Yeah. So the question was, does the DAX call happen if the visual is hidden? And it does not. So it only pops when you turn that visual on. So two minutes left. Any other questions? Cool. Well, we'll, we'll be around um, if you have questions or want to talk. Happy. You can.